There's something intriguing about these little seed beads. Individually, they're so cute and tiny, and when they're strung together, they make a huge impact. But creating these long strands can be tedious, so I found a way to string yards and yards of these beads without going crazy. Plus, I'll show you a variation of a small felt purse my mom would safety pin to my dress to hold my milk money. It's who I am, a little bit. You start out with a piece of felt, and I cut it out in this shape. You can download the template off of the website. When you fold it up, it creates a trapezoid shape. Next, I've used a contrasting thread, and I stitched a blanket stitch all the way around the edge. And when I captured it on these two edges, it creates the little pocket. What I'm starting with is some seed beads here that I've mixed a couple of different colors. I have some copper and some gold here, and it creates a nice color contrast for my purse here. I'm embroidering the beads on with a Lazy Daisy stitch. You start with the thread coming up from the center of the flower, and I strung on about 16 of the seed beads in a variation. They don't have to be in any particular order. You push your needle back down through the center of the flower. You pull the thread out from the bottom to tighten up the petal here. Lay that down and then push your needle up along the tip of the petal. Pull your thread, tighten that up, and now reinsert the needle back close to the same place where you pulled it up, and that secures the tip of the petal. Then what you do is you tie this off in a little knot to secure all of those threads. Then you want to trim off all of this extra thread here. Now, to create the necklace part of the purse, I have some beads here from the copper bead selection of a jewelry kit from the beadery. I strung on a few of the mixture of the seed beads and one of these pearl-like beads continued on with a pattern about one every half of an inch or so, so that I end up with about a six inch length. Then. I continued with the strand of beads. This is the part of the necklace that's going to be hanging behind my neck, so it's okay that it's simple. And once I ended up at the other end of the necklace, I continued on with that pattern. Finally, I strung on this fold-over bead tip. You just string it on like a regular bead, and then you tie an overhand knot to secure it. Move the knot all the way down, really close to that fold over bead. You want to secure that with a drop of glue over that knot inside that fold over bead tip. To crimp the beads, I'm going to use this three in one tool from the beadery. It has needle nose, flat edge, and wire cutters all in one tool. I'm going to use the flat edge part here to crimp that fold over bead tip. You just squeeze it in between the flat area, and that closes the bead tip. Now with my pair of scissors, I just trim the extra thread, and I'm ready to attach the necklace to my purse. I just use the curved end of my fold-over bead tip, hook it on a jump ring, and an eyelet that I've inserted into the felt to make it a little bit more secure. Then I just use the needle nose part of my tool and I curve around the edge here so that's really secure. And I just repeat that on the other side and now my necklace is attached to my purse. Watch it fall around me and shades coming through green. So what else can I do with these seed beads? How about making a necklace like this? 
To make this necklace, you need six strands of the beading thread, and I cut that to about 48 inches. It seems really long for this necklace, but it's much better to have extra thread than not enough. I threaded it through one of those fold over bead tips, and on the open side of the bead tip, I just take the ends of my thread and I tie an overhand knot. You pull it really tight and fold over with the flat edge of my pliers, just like I did on the other necklace. Cut off the edges of the thread, and now we're ready to start beading. Now, if I'm stringing each of those strands, one bead at a time, that project seems a little daunting. So I have to show you my newest favorite tool. I'm using the seed bead stringer from the beadery. What you do is you fill the bowl with your seed beads, and using this long needle that has a hook on it, when you spin the bowl, the beads magically climb up the needle. It's important to hold the tip of the needle so that it faces into the flow of the beads. Not too high and not too low. Let the needle kind of dance on top of the spinning beads. Once you've gotten several beads up this needle, then you push them off down the thread. Sometimes when you're pushing the beads onto the needle, you'll find that there's one that's just a little bit too small and it doesn't go over the eye of the needle. If I use the three-in-one tool and I press down on the bead, it breaks the bead off and now I can continue threading without losing some of that work that I've done. So you can see this will make stringing beads much faster. When I'm finished stringing each strand of beads, I tie off the end by looping the end of my thread through the last bead and that secures it. I'm going to finish each end of my strands this way so all the beads stay securely on the strands. Now I'm ready to braid this. I just use a clipboard and secure one end of my necklace that allows me to hold the necklace while I'm braiding. Just braid your necklace like you're braiding your ponytail. I separated the six strands into three sets of two using the multicolored beads and the mauve colored beads. I finished braiding the necklace and I secured the end with one of those fold over bead tips and I also attached the clasp. Now I want to add the pendant onto my necklace. You just slide the pendant through one end of the necklace. I'm going to tie a loose fold over knot to secure it and keep it from sliding around. And that is my finished necklace. Aren't these gorgeous? I just love the little purse necklace that I made that holds my milk money. And I made a larger purse necklace that holds a credit card for shopping. This heather necklace is just beautiful with the braid, and I was able to make a bracelet and a pair of earrings. I'm so glad I don't have to string each strand one at a time. I'll see you next time. To create this project yourself, download this week's design guide. You'll get step-by-step -step instructions along with special make-it-your-own bonus tips and ideas.